Hi, welcome to lessons two and three of implementing the solution, language syntax required for software solutions. Here are the dot points covered, pause if you'd like to read them. Firstly, we're going to talk about EBNF or extended backwards in a while form. It's basically a meta language or a language defining another language. And it's a way to define the rules or the syntax of another language. We've got a variety of symbols, they're shown in the table below. Equal sign is defined as, so you put the name of the definition on the left and all these other symbols and their definitions are on the right. We have the straight line, which indicates a choice between alternatives. So you have to choose one of the symbols in here, but each of them, you can choose which one, okay? That straight line is entered by pressing the backslash key, which is above the enter key on your keyboard. We have a terminal symbol, which um, is basically just written as is. And so what that means is you don't need to, to define it. So if we need to put print in there, for instance, as a command, you could just write print and that'll be fine. We have the less than greater than symbols. You put a term in there and it uh, signifies a term that is subsequently defined. So this is kind of like a subprogram. If I put, say, letter in here, I know I need to go find a letter definition to work out what a letter actually is. The square brackets indicate an optional part of a definition. So anything in square brackets is completely optional. You don't have to use it, but you can. These are braces, okay? They indicate a possible repetition, okay? And things can be repeated zero or more times. So that means everything in uh, braces is completely optional as well. But it also can be repeated uh, any number of times. And things in parentheses are used to group elements together so that if we have a group of things that are repeated or a group of things that are optional, we can use these to group them together. Examples are as follows. So here I've got my definition of a letter and a letter is A, B or C. And so in this definition, a letter can only be a capital A or a capital B or a capital C, it cannot be anything else. No lowercase letters, these can't be repeated. So a letter can't be more than one letter at once. Okay, over here I've got digit and I've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, which means that I don't have any other numbers as digits in this definition. An identifier is uh, defined as a letter, and then I can either choose to have a letter or a digit. I can repeat this number of times. So in this case, I could have B24A because I'm going letter and then repeating digit, digit, letter. I can have C because I've got a letter here and I'm not using these at all because I can repeat them zero times. And I have letter, 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 digit. So letter, 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 digit. A valid identifier would not be four because the first thing must be a letter and not a digit. And down here have my, I have my assignment statement, let identifier equal identifier. And so using these up here, a valid assignment statement could be let C equal B24A because okay, both C and B24A are identifiers. Moving on, we have a railroad diagram, which is a graphical meta-language. Okay? So just like the EBNF, it's used to define the rules of a language, and it follows a railroad metaphor. We've got some symbols. We've got the rectangles, which are used to enclose non-terminal symbols, um, which will be further defined. We have circles and rounded rectangles, which are used to enclose terminal symbols. Okay. Um, these, the only difference is you might use the circle for a single letter or a small amount of characters, whereas this rounded rectangle would be used for, for larger things. Okay. And we have the line which links all the parts. Okay. In a railroad diagram, a valid definition is a track that a train can follow. You can only move forward. These are examples of railroad diagrams. So these are the same definitions from the slide for the EBNFs. So we have a letter, which can be A, B, or C, nothing else. And you can see the train can either go straight through here, or up and down, or down and down. I can't go through here and turn around because the train can't do that. Digits again, one, two, three, four, five, and the same sort of idea. We have identifiers, and so I can have letter, and then through here, I can repeat and go back up and choose a letter and come through, or I can go down and choose a digit and go through. And because these tracks are looped, I can do these multiple times. 
to get multiple letters and multiple digits, just like in the EBNF. And then in the assignment statement, I have let identifier equal identifier, just as I had before. To draw your railroad diagrams, we'll be using Google Docs and Lucid Charts. So in a Google Doc, you can go up to add-ons and click on get add-ons and you'll be able to find the Lucid Chart Diagrams add-on if you haven't already added it. So I've got Lucid Charts here. If it didn't appear here for you, you can go up here to search for Lucid Charts. Once you've done that, you can click a box over here to add it and then go through the prompts to add the Lucid Chart add-on. Once you've got it, you can come up here, click on Lucid Charts and insert a diagram and it will get a message over here. So you can either insert a diagram you've already made or you can create one here and then add it. And you can see the previews down here. What Lucid Charts will do is it will add a JPEG version of your Lucid Charts diagram into the Google Doc, but it will also provide a link to it so that if you click on the JPEG, it will link to the Lucid Chart itself. Okay. So for me, I'm going to go to Create and click on that and we'll make a Lucid Chart. Here's one I've already made. So if I go through here, to make a railroad diagram, it's quite simple. The first thing I need to do is drag a text box to the thing I'm defining. So I'm going to define a uh, letter like we did before. Okay, so I'm just going to write letter. And the next thing I want to do is shrink my box down so that really the only um, the only space I've got in the border is for the text, and I don't really have much white space. So for me, that's about four boxes wide and, and two high. The next trick in Lucid Charts is to copy that definition and then put it right next to the original one. And you'll see the reason for that in a minute. Then I drag one of these connectors over and this can be used for the things I predefined. So you can see that I put A in there and you can make that a bit smaller if you wish. And I can just put it wherever I like. Okay. Then I can copy that. Put it underneath, make that B, copy that, put it underneath, make that C, and I can keep going with as many of these as I need. Then what I want to do, this is the, the next tricky step, copy that uh, letter definition again and put that on the right, the same spacing as the other one. Okay, So here's where the, uh, the funkiness comes in. What I want to do you can see here I've got the, the four um, headed arrow. When I move close to the edge of the letterbox, it turns into just a, a cross. So there's the border, it turns into a cross. From there, I want to draw up here to make a line that links. You get an arrowhead, you can come over here and turn those off. Okay, And then I want to do the same. Uh, make that selected, do the same thing here. And again, do the same here. Okay. Then I can do the same thing to the box here. Okay. Make sure you get in the middle because it looks a bit pretty like so. Okay. Now the only problem is I need a line going from letter here, this one, to these ones, and a line going through this letter. So these here. They just act as anchors for these lines to stick to. What I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a line from this letter to the edge of this letter. And you can see there it's just grabbed the top, so I'm going to delete that one and try to draw again. Okay, and then I can double click on the letter and just remove the text and I get my line. Similarly from here, I can draw a line from this edge of letter straight through to the other edge of letter like so, and then double click and move the text. And now I have a perfect data flow, uh, sorry, a perfect railroad diagram. Okay, so now I'm ready to go. I can just basically look for this title, SAD Hyperly 2015 question 16 DDFD, in my list chart. You can see it moves to the top since it's the most recently added one. And I can go down here and choose which diagram I want. It natively adds each page of the diagram. So there's my first page. There's my second page, and there's a third page, which is the one I want. Click insert, and it will insert the doc, the uh, the lucid chart 
right where my cursor is. Just wait for it to do its thing. And there you are. And so you can see the link there. And I can resize that to be as big or as small as I want. And that's basically how I add a list chart diagram to my Google Doc.